PC Power Picker is one of the best tools that you can use if you want to build a new computer. For those who don't know, PC Power Picker is a very simple website where you can put every component together and you make sure that your PC build is going to be compatible, you can see the entire price and you can also compare prices between components. Now, if you don't know how to use this tool, then you may put the wrong PC together and end up getting a system that's not right for you, for your budget, your needs and the monitor resolution that you have. For that reason, this video is a bit different and is a tutorial on how to use this PC part picker and make sure that you get the best PC build that you can. My name is Valentino and with that being said, let's start. So there are two options that you have when you start with the PC power picker list. The first option is going in order. So you choose the CPU first, then the CPU cooler, then the motherboard and so on. And the second option is to start with the graphics card. If you are a beginner and you know nothing about computers, I do recommend you starting with the graphics card. But if you are not a beginner, then I do recommend you starting with the CPU and then go in order. The reason why I say this is because if you start in order and you get to the graphics card and you see that it doesn't fit the budget that you have if you know about computers then you know what to adjust but if you are a beginner and this happens to you then you don't know what to change in order to get the best price to performance system so let's start with the graphics card so the first step is setting a budget for the sake of this video we are going to say that i have a thousand dollars to spend on a new gaming pc and once you have your budget you can start i do recommend you spending 40 to 50 percent of your budget in your graphics card this is going to depend as well on the amount of money that you want to spend because if you have a really high budget let's say you have three thousand dollars then you can spend a 50 percent for your graphics card and you are going to be fine or even a 60 percent because you have plenty of money to spend on the rest of the components but if you're working with a tight budget let's say you have eight hundred dollars or below then i recommend you spending around 40 percent in your graphics card because if you spend 50 percent then you have to make sure that the other components are not going to bottleneck your graphics card and it is harder this way because you have less money to spend so it depends on your budget, but between 40 and 50% is the general rule of thumb for the graphics card because it's the most important component when it comes to gaming and you should always prioritize your graphics card and then get a CPU that will not bottleneck it. So let's start with the graphics card. Remember, we have a thousand dollars to spend. So I do recommend you setting the limit to $500 here like that since it's the 50%. Here you have to have some sort of PC knowledge because you want to find out which one is the best graphics card for you. Now, lucky for you, I have a complete video talking about the best PC builds for different budgets, different resolution and also different games. So if you want to see that one, it will be in the top right of the screen. I'm not going to explain here what graphics card should you get, but for around 400, 500 dollars, which is the 40 to 50 percent of your budget, we have some different graphics cards that I do recommend. And the first one that I like is the RX 6800. Right now it's going on a huge discount, which is around 360 dollars, as you can see for the cheapest model, which is an XF X graphics card very good quality honestly for 360 dollars you are getting amazing 1440p performance and that's going to be the graphics card that i'm choosing now if i wanted to i could go up to 400 dollars to spend on the graphics card but because the 6800 is such a good deal right now i saved a couple of bucks and got a perfect gpu then i do like to continue with the cpu because as i said before it's the second most important component when it comes to gaming and you must get a cpu that will not bottleneck your gpu now for the 6800 i could go with something like your ryzen 5 5600 or i5 12400f but since i have more money to spend i have around a thousand dollars let's try going with the ryzen 5 7600 which is from the new am5 platform and as of right now is going for 148 dollars which is an insane deal actually i want to check if this is actually a real deal because it sounds like a scam so if we go to amazon and check here as you can see this is not very legit because it says shipped from this company and sold by this company Company. so you have to do some research here so let's go to this company and see if they are legit or not as you can see they all they only have six ratings which is not great because you always want to buy from a reliable company so if we go to other sellers on amazon let's search for the amazon one which is going to be much 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 later 
which is this one right here, as you can see, ships from Amazon and sold by Amazon. This one is the one that you want to get. So it's $188. When this happens, you can add this one and the price, as you can see, is wrong because the $148 bucks is from the price that you don't want to get because I do not know if it's a scam or not, but I do not trust it. So I wouldn't recommend you buying it at this price point. So you click here on the settings section and you put your price manually here. So you put $188 and that's how you adjust the price so here we have a ryzen 5 7600 with the rx 6800 which is an amazing cpu and gpu combo and we are spending around 548 bucks so we have around 450 dollars left to spend and the next thing i would choose is going to be the motherboard now for the motherboard you need something that has good vrms for our ryzen 5 7600 and if you want to upgrade down the line you want something that has good vrms for right now and also for the future however since we have a thousand dollars to spend we don't have a lot for that reason we are going to be getting a budget motherboard if you are going to buy from the am5 platform i do recommend you choosing a b650 motherboard which you can choose right here as you can see chipset you choose the one that says amd b650 then you go from the cheapest to the most most expensive one here once again you either have to have some sort of knowledge to choose the right motherboard or you can just watch my videos on the best pc builds of the month as i said before but i do like the pro rs it's going for 130 bucks it's a great mid-range motherboard that's going to be great for right now but also for the future if i eventually want to upgrade to something like the ryzen 7 7800 3d which is the fastest cpu in the entire market or arguably the fastest one so here we have 130 dollars more we have around 350 dollars to spend something around that number and then we are going to choose the memory kit i do like going to cl 36000 megahertz memory kits because this is basically the sweet spot for gaming and i do like choosing 32 gigs of ram because the price difference between 16 gigs of ram and 32 gigs of ram when it comes to ddr5 memory is not that much so i'm going with 32 gigs of ram you can choose this by scrolling down and you go with two modules of 16 gigs and then you sort by the cheapest one again and here most kits are fine you can see the reviews if you want you can see this one has 21 reviews five star rating and it's from team group i do like this kit and it's only 98 dollars well not only because it's not cheap but it is not far away from the cheapest kit from silicon power so i'm just going to choose this one and then i'm going with the storage the storage market right now is quite expensive so i'm going with a one terabyte gen 3 or gen 4 ssd i do like the kingston mb2 because i do not know the market a little bit if you don't know the market you just go and you have to scroll down and then select gen 3 here and gen 4 and you choose at least one terabyte which is what i recommend for gaming that's the minimum you can go with two terabytes if you have more money to spend and you want to download a bunch of titles but since we have a thousand dollars as you can see the cheapest one here is 60 dollars and the kingston mb2 is a gen 4 drive for 61 and then we also have the crucial p3 which is slightly faster than the kingston drive and it's going for the same price so we are going to choose the the crucial p3 slightly faster than the mb2 as i said before however i just made a mistake i didn't realize this is a crucial p3 not the crucial p3 plus the p3 plus is the one that's faster so we are going to go again to the mb2 and choose this one which is gem 4 so it doesn't really matter which one you get to be honest if you're going to do gaming because you are not going to be achieving a higher performance because you get a gen 4 or a gen 3 drive the difference is more for professional content creators but since we are making a gaming build it doesn't really matter but if you see that a gen 3 drive is the same price as a gen 4 and you know that the gen 4 drive is good quality because this one is actually good quality i tested it myself with this build right here just go for it so now we have around 170 dollars to spend and we have the case and power supply left for the case i do like the xt pro ultra from fantex it's going for 70 dollars and it has four pre-installed fans however this is an atx case meaning that it's quite big and the motherboard is micro atx so it might look a bit weird so some people do not like it i don't mind it but if you want to go with a micro atx case you can go with this one right here which is the montec air 100 argp let's search it up right here montec air we go from the cheapest one and it's not available and it's not that it's not available i just realized that the rx 6800 is quite big you can go here and check the size yourself it's 340 millimeters length which is quite big so for that reason i'm going to get the xd pro ultra anyway yes i know we have a micro atx motherboard but i want to make sure that the gpu is going to fix inside of the case so if you know nothing about computers maybe you don't realize these things but that's why pc power picker is so good in my opinion 
because this case right here is not going to fit that specific RX 6800 so you don't have to worry about choosing it because you cannot choose it if you go with the 6800 so the tool is going to do it for you which is amazing and you only get compatible components so we have around 100 dollars to spend for the power supply which is great and if you want to choose the right power supply i recommend you right here in the top right you can see estimated wattage i recommend you multiplying this number by 1.5 and um, that number is going to be around 600 to 650 watts but if you want you can add a hundred watts for safety or if you want to upgrade down the line to a more beefy graphics card for example so i'm going to go and set this to 750 watts at least which is overkill for this build but as i said before if you want to upgrade down the line you have more wattage you choose by the cheapest one to the most expensive and here you have the PSU Cooltis list if you want to use it, which is a tool that's going to allow you to pick the best power supplies in the market. Because if it says 80 plus runs or 80 plus gold, that doesn't matter. The thing that matters here is the quality of the specific power supply. So that's why there's an entire list on the best power supplies that the community made. And you can go ahead and click that website. It's going to be down below in the description. Now I do have some knowledge about these power supplies, and the one that I like usually is the NCXT C750 because is going for $90 is 80 rated so great quality I added to my list and here we are at around a thousand dollars and we got a perfect build I hope that you found this video helpful yes I know I did not explain everything about these components because the video would be very long but that's how I would recommend you making a PC list start with the graphics card continue with the CPU and then adjust from there now the CPU cooler I didn't add anything because the stock cooler from AMD is going to be enough for the 76 hundred but if you want to for around 20 bucks you can add a cpu cooler and spend a bit more and as i said before if you have no pc knowledge in terms of pc builds i highly recommend you watching my video on the best pc builds because even if you learn on how to pick the right components if you don't know what to pick then you can make a mistake and buy the wrong system anyway let me know what you think in the comment section and if you have any questions regarding your situation about the gaming pc that you want to buy you can ask me on my pc community that's going to be in the top link in the description. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for your support and I will see you on the next one.